journal motion of a star uh, journal motion of a star represents the daily motion of a star on the celestial uh, sphere so if this is a celestial sphere and this represents the horizon circle then let's say this is celestial north pole and this one is zenith this is zenith nadir and let's say this is the celestial equator then uh, 24 hour motion obviously our uh, this celestial sphere would rotate uh, along this axis so every any star if you consider any star on this celestial sphere let's suppose you consider this star then obviously if this uh, sphere is rotating along this particular axis and this star is also rotating as we learned in uh, previous moment while learning the drawback of the coordinate system horizon coordinate system and uh, drawback of the equatorial coordinate system so uh, the celestial sphere is rotating so the star also rotating and when the star rotating this motion is known as the diurnal motion the daily motion the 24 hour motion of a star so uh, this happen in such a way that the center if you look at the projection of this cnp the pole star, there is a pole star at CNP. So this uh, pole star would be at the center. If you look at the projection of this, at the center of this uh, small circle, the journal motion of, of star. Now in this situation, obviously uh, when the star goes below the horizon, then the star is said to be set. If the star move above the horizon, the star is said to be uh, set to rise. Now, how the star journal motion would look like if the observer is at the pole. Observer is at the pole. Now, if you look at the diagram, let us first uh, try to understand the zenith and the nadi. Now, let's suppose uh, this is the planet Earth and this would represent the pole. So, obviously, this would be celestial north pole. And the observer is here at the pole. So, this point would also be the zenith uh, this would be the celestial equator and this would also represents the horizon circle now every star move around uh, this uh, celestial north pole so if, if you choose any star then the journal motion would be like this you consider any star with a specific declination so the circle represents the journal motion So for an observer at the pole, there exists no star which set or which no star go below the horizon or no star come above the horizon. No, uh, let me just write no star no star go your yeah, move above the horizon similarly in fact when a star does not go below or above the horizon such star is known as circumpolar star so all star are circumpolar star now, look, what would be the situation if the observer is on the pole? Sorry, is at equator. Now again, uh, let's look at the celestial equator diagram. This is a celestial equator. And uh, this would be the Earth. So uh, the observer is at this place so this would be zenith and this would be the celestial north pole because the pole is over here and uh, this would represents the horizon and this would 
represents the celestial equator. Now all star are actually moving around uh, this uh, celestial north pole. So this would be the motion, journal motion of the star. Now, as you can observe that every star crosses the horizon, every star crosses the horizon circle. So all star are actually, all star crosses the horizon. Every star goes below the horizon, every star move above the horizon. So no star is circumpolar. or an observer on uh, for observer at latitude sorry at at equator now let us come to the circumpolar star What are circumpolar stars? Circumpolar stars are those which never go below the horizon or never come above the horizon. For example, this is the horizon circle. This is the celestial equator. So if you consider the diurnal motion of any star, let's suppose this is the star, would be zenith and nadi, celestial north pole. So uh, this since the star motion, this does not go below the horizon and it does not uh, come above the horizon. The star always remain above the horizon. So such star are known as circumpolar star. Star which never go below horizon or never move above horizon. Such star are known as circumpolar star. Now let us derive a mathematical condition that when a star can be a circumpolar star, when the observer is in the northern hemisphere. So now mathematical condition for a star to be circumpolar. And let's say we are first working for an observer in Northern Hemisphere. So for that, uh, let us say this is the celestial sphere. This is the horizon circle. This would be the celestial equator and this would be celestial north pole. If you consider any star, let's say this is the uh, star motion, journal motion. Now, definitely I can say that this star would always be circumpolar if the altitude distance of the celestial north pole from the horizon circle which is the altitude, let's say this is A, is always greater than the distance between the North Pole and the star. Let's say this is D. So the star would be circumpolar if this A of the celestial North Pole is greater than the distance D between the pole, celestial north pole and the star. If this condition is uh, valid, then the star would always be circumpolar. Now, what is ACNP? ACNP is actually the altitude. So what is this altitude? We know that the angle between celestial north pole and zenith, this angle is 90 minus 5. Then obviously this 
a would be equal to phi similarly try to figure out the distance between the celestial north pole c and p and the star what is this distance uh, what we know is that the angle between the star and the celestial equator is declination and also the angle between uh, c and p and celestial equator the angle is 90 degree and the angle between star and celestial equator is declination so if you figure out this d this d is actually equal to 90 minus delta so just try to substitute this value in this condition so finally i can write that phi is greater than 90 minus delta or i can write delta is greater than 90 minus phi so this is the mathematical condition for a star to be circumpolar if the observer is in the northern hemisphere now what about the uh, for the uh, observer in the southern hemisphere observer in the southern hemisphere again consider the same situation horizon then celestial equator again consider a star with the dunal motion let's say this is the star with the dunal motion uh, this would be nadir this would be celestial south pole and again uh, if you look at the mathematical condition then i can say that uh, the altitude of the celestial south pole must be greater than the distance between the celestial south pole and the star that means this distance which is d must be smaller than the altitude the distance from the horizon to the celestial south pole now the distance between uh, celestial south pole and the horizon is actually celestial south pole altitude is phi because this angle is 90 minus phi and the angle between zenith and horizon is 90 degree this angle is 90 degree therefore a must be equal to phi then distance between a uh, celestial south pole and star is equal to declination of star minus declination of pole now you might be wondering why declination of star minus declination of pole this is actually due to the reason because declination is negative in the southern hemisphere so this would be declination of the star is delta minus declination is measured from celestial equator so it is the declination this d is the declination of the star minus declination of the pole declination of the pole is minus 90 degree because in the southern hemisphere the declination is negative okay so this is delta plus 90 so just substitute these values so finally uh, we have this equation that is phi is greater than delta plus 90 or i can simply write phi minus delta is greater than 90 so this is the mathematical condition for a star to be circumpolar in the southern hemisphere thank you for watching